Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Northern Brewer Last Straw Bottle Filler. This is a very similar tool to the Blickman Beer Gun and the Tap Cooler, uh, kind of in concept. It's a bottle filler. This is something you can use to hook up to your keg or to your fermenter uh, to be able to bottle straight from either source. Uh, big thank you to Todd at Northern Brewer for sending this my way. Really do appreciate your support of the channel over the last several videos. Northern Brewer is uh, no longer owned by AB InBev, if you haven't heard already. They've been in business for a very long time, and uh, they are a great spot to go get knowledge on home brewing, but also to uh, source ingredients and equipment if you're in the market for some of that stuff. So go on, check out northernbrewer.com, or check out the link in the description box to uh, see what that's all about. In the box, we have our last straw pre-assembled and then of course we have a large coil tubing for connecting to kegs. Next we're going to attach the liquid and the CO2 lines. This one's your liquid line, this one's your CO2 line. Um, it's really handy, they actually come with these little washers. Those fit in the end of these swivel knots here so you don't really have to worry about using thread tape. Now the uh, there's going to be two sets of swivel nuts and hoses in the kit. One of them is going to have a keg disconnect on one end and the other one is not. The one without the keg disconnect is your CO2 line, which is going to go on this thread here. These are finger tight for now, but I'll tighten these up with a wrench later. So then go ahead and repeat the process with the second input line, which is your liquid line. This is the end of the CO2 line that they uh, include so that they expect you to hook this up to your CO2 tank basically every time you want to use the bottle filler um, and that way it supplies CO2 to the bottle filler to purge your bottles or cans or whatever. Um, that's not exactly the best solution. It would be nice to have a quick disconnect here so if you have the ability to hook one of those up um, to hook up to your gas tank then that's great. I don't really have that option right now. Uh, but what I do have are my gas lines leading into my kegs. They, those look like this. It's exactly the same thing. So I've already loosened this, but uh, you take off your gas side disconnect and you're left with the exact same connection. So you can hook this directly up to the bottle filler. So just make sure you have that washer in there to achieve a good seal against the bottle filler. So now if I pressurize that line, I should have gas in there, which I do. Next, you want to take that liquid post off your keg and replace it with the one from the bottle filler. Of course, you're really going to want to make sure everything is sanitized when you do this for real. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to be using a can shaped glass here. I would probably do this on the ground too, normally as well, or in a place where I can catch any spillover. But so to use this, you just stick your bottle filler in the can, glass bottle, whatever you're filling, and put your trigger finger on the CO2 button here. You're gonna push that a couple times, uh, set the regulator to about 10 or so PSI to ensure that it has good purging power. And you're just gonna push that several times to get the oxygen out of the can or whatever and uh, that replaces it with CO2. To fill, all you do is push that bottling wand all the way down, push down hard so you don't end up with any sort of uh, accidental um, foaming, and just let it fill naturally from the bottom up. This is how you get that uh, reduction in foam. Now, if this was an actual can, you go all the way up, you'd fill over the top, and you cap on foam. So as you can see, it's actually a really simple process overall and does a pretty good job of at least pouring you a glass of beer. The reason why I didn't use an actual bottle or an actual can in this is so you could see the actual foam levels of the pint that's being filled from the bottom up. Now, if this was an actual can, you wouldn't be able to see that. So if I was doing this as if I was actually canning beer, I'd want to fill this all the way to the brim to the point where it overflowed. And this is normally something you would do in like a little spill containment kind of area because you're gonna make a little bit of a mess. Uh, at that point, you'd have foam or liquid on top, you'd put your uh, can lid on top of that and then you'd seam the whole thing. Uh, for the bottle, it's pretty much the same concept, just with a capper instead of a can seamer. While I don't have experience with other types of bottle fillers such as the Blickman beer gun or the tap cooler, um, I can tell you right now this is very solid construction. It's all made out of stainless steel. Anything that's touching your wort is either tubing or some stainless steel. So it's very easy to sanitize. It's something you can use again and again. 
uh, makes a big difference in terms of sanitation and cleaning. Uh, cleaning this is also very easy since it's just two pass-through tubes. Um, so you can sanitize the entire thing very quickly and easily. All right, so I've had the last straw now for the last several weeks, actually. And I've had a lot of opportunity to use it in a variety of different uh, settings. The first time I used it was actually on camera, right in this video, when I filled up that can-shaped glass. And the whole reason behind getting the last straw in the first place was so that I would be set up for canning later on down the road. Because you do need a bottle filler like this one to fill cans with. You can't really do that in any other way because you have to purge oxygen out of the can from the bottom up immediately before filling. Uh, and that's what this is kind of designed to do. So I have this piece of equipment now if I ever do make the leap into canning. And that's looking more and more likely just because of the way that the market is moving right now. There is some stuff on the horizon regarding canning and can seamers that is looking like it's going to be a lot more home brewer budget friendly. And I'm very excited to work into that. But in order to do that, we need to make sure we have a bottle filler like this one first. But also I've used it uh, to fill regular 12 ounce bottles with, without any sort of issues. I brought a whole bunch of beer uh, to my family's Thanksgiving celebration. It's definitely not the quickest bottle filler in the world, but it gets the job done and it gets it done well. It's just very easy to purge the bottle of CO2 right before filling it. Um, it doesn't really take any extra time, which is nice. Um, and lastly, I used it actually directly from my fermenter uh, to bottle my Christmas Weizenbach with. Uh, so I bottle conditioned that entire brew in 750 milliliter Belgian style bottles. Uh, the bottle filler worked very well in that case as well. It turns out that size bottle is actually about the maximum uh, depth that you can get with this system um, because it has to reach the bottom of the bottle and then push down to activate the flow of liquid. It looks like a 750 milliliter bottle is right on the edge of how far you can go. But either way, whether it's filling a can, filling a bottle, or filling uh, from the fermenter, there's really no complaints that I have beyond the ones I just outlined. It's a great piece of kit, and it's available for about $99 on northernbrewer.com, which is about the same price as most of its competition, uh, such as the Blickman Beer Gun, the Tap Cooler, and the More Beer Counter Pressure Bottle Filler. And the last straw is also all stainless steel, just like all the rest of the competitors there. There is one caveat, though, uh, and that is that a couple of the competitors' products that I mentioned are in indeed true counter pressure bottle fillers and will allow you to fill fully carbonated beer into your bottles without excessive foaming and will allow you to also keep the actual carbonation level intact without any sort of loss. Because it eliminates the pressure differential between the keg and the bottle, you don't have any CO2 escaping solution as you fill your bottle. So with a counter pressure bottle filler, A, you don't get excessive foaming, and B, your beer remains carbonated over a long period of time. It doesn't go flat. The last straw, however, is still very capable of keeping that foam under control, and it also allows you to fill pretty much right up to the lip of the bottle if you know what you're doing uh, without any sort of concerns about losing too much carbonation. So it kind of works out in the end. There's one thing to be aware of though, and that is if you take the hoses off, uh, the little gaskets that sit in the uh, swivel nuts in the hoses tend to get lost. Uh, so make sure you're keeping track of where those are. Make sure you don't lose them at the bottom of a bucket of sanitizer or something like that, uh, because that's entirely possible and very easy to do. I am expecting people to uh, inevitably ask me to compare this to the ITAP. But before we do that, I want to show off my new Christmas sweaters really quickly. So this one is the first one. This is Have Yourself a Merry Little Homebrew. Uh, it has a couple Christmas designs on it, logo on the back, a logo of the giant Christmas tree. Um, and it's actually a lot of fun. I really like this one. They're very comfortable. These are not knit sweaters. They're kind of more like nice hoodie material. Um, they're very comfortable, but these are printed with Christmas sweater designs. So this is the first one. And the second one is this one, Happy Holidays. Um, I kind of went a little bit more nuts with the design and the decoration on this one. Little hop cones, Christmas lights, snowmen, candy canes, it just, uh, the list goes on. Of course, these come in multiple colors. I'm gonna probably run these all the way through about New Year's or so. So pick them up while you can if you want one. Again, it's no obligation, but it's a great way to help support the channel and it means a lot to me since I put a lot of time actually into making these designs. So I hope you do enjoy. 
But back to the video, we want to talk about how this compares to the iTap. Um, it's a completely different product and it's not really a fair comparison, uh, but I will indulge you anyway, because I know you're going to ask me since I already talked about the iTap. They retail for the same price. The iTap is plastic and it's a counter pressure bottle filler. The uh, last straw is stainless steel and it is a regular bottle filler. They're really two different things. I mean, the iTap is a counter pressure bottle filler that's designed specifically for bottles. It requires dedicated space on your kegerator. It only works with bottles. It also does a very good job at pressurizing that bottle to a high degree as you are transferring your beer. So it is a very good counter pressure bottle filler. That being said, it purges CO2 from the top down, whereas the last straw and the other similar kinds of bottle fillers purge it from the bottom up, which makes a big difference as you are actually actively pushing oxygen out. Whereas if you are pushing from the top down, you do still kind of run the risk of leaving a little oxygen in there that gets compressed and pushed to the bottom. Uh, but if that matters to you, then that's just something to be aware of. The last straw is extremely easy to take apart, clean and store somewhere that's not my kegerator. Uh, so that's kind of nice as well. But honestly, they are very different products. For my applications where I'm only filling bottles a few times, if I'm taking beer to a party or to a family gathering, or if I'm filling cans, the last straw makes a lot of sense for me and it fits pretty perfectly within that role. I have no complaints with that. So my overall experience with it is very positive. Um, overall, I like the fact that it's all stainless steel. I like how easy it is to set up and clean. Um, and especially as somebody who doesn't really bottle all that much, that makes a lot of sense in my case. But I am very happy with Northern Brewers offering. Um, it will cover all the bases that you need it to and it works very well. It's easy to assemble and disassemble. Ultimately, and very importantly, it is easy to clean um, and it stores away well if I need to not use it for a long period of time. It's definitely an important thing to have in your brew house, especially if you're making that leap to canning because with cans, you need to make sure you really do purge all that CO2 out from them. And the only way you can do that is to purge it from the bottom with one of these devices. So let me know what your thoughts are on this whole thing. If you own a Blickman beer gun or a tap cooler or something similar that I didn't mention, let me know what your experience is down in the comment section. Let me know how this product compares to that one. And as always, thank you for checking out the video. And if you learned something and enjoyed it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for more content as well. And if you want to support the channel, please pick up one of these awesome holiday sweaters uh, if you want to, or check out some of the t-shirts, pine glasses, other types of merch that I have down below. It's a great way to support the channel. Uh, if you want to support it on a more personal basis, I also have a Patreon. The Patreon supporters are really the big drivers behind this channel, and you guys have my utmost thanks for continuing to support me this whole time, and you guys are awesome. I also have an Amazon store, so if you're looking for other types of brewing equipment and you're not sure what to buy, if I've used the piece of equipment and I actually recommend it and I enjoyed my experience with it, and it's available on Amazon, it will be on that store. So check that out if you want to look for some more stuff. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer. So check that out for some slightly more frequent content updates uh, than YouTube. And if you're still watching, thanks for sticking around to the end. You guys are awesome. And this one goes out to you. So until the next one, cheers.